tastes like tequila. What that mean? It's nice. It's nice. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's nice. Shout out to my guys at Los Hermanos, man. Thanks for sponsoring the, the podcast. Let's get it started. J Hill Podcast. Mr. J Hill, I'm here. Yo, I wanted to open this show like this okay. since we got out the phone. All right. You own a piece of my childhood. Okay. How do you feel about when somebody says that? It's refreshing always, right? Uh huh. Because, like, for me, it's like, how? Like, where were you when I impacted your life? Like, I'm curious about that. Like, when I run into people on the street, like, if me and my family, we stop at a restaurant, and they be like, look, before you eat, let's take this picture. And I'm yeah. like, we take pictures and stuff. We talk, chop up. One girl, we was in um, Vegas, and we was in a pool. She started crying, bro. She started crying in the pool. She was like, yo, my friend passed away. She she went through this and that. And then um, I don't know if it was suicide or something that she dealt with. And she was like, in junior high, like me, this was our bonding song, Lip Gloss. So to see you in the flesh, bro. She was like, I'm drunk. I know I'm drunk, but you don't understand. And I really did understand because it's like, that's that's your moment. You know what mm. I mean? So what's, what's your moment? So, you know, it's funny because I rarely have moments like this because I like we joke all the time how about... I don't be like in the scene when it comes to the music and things like that, but I vividly remember lip gloss being popping, <laughs> no point intended, and like niggas doing a dance. Cause like, you know, like New York and Baltimore is about like three hours Neighbors, away. Yeah. So yeah, you feel me? Like we used to do the little, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, you feel me? Even though we ain't really know how to do it. Yeah. Like I vividly remember this time. And I thought it was dope because shout out to my dog. I bring her name up in every other podcast. Zanik was up here. And like I she love was a, Zonique. She was a part of OMG Girls. Yeah, we love Zonique. Zonique had, and my sister look just alike. Not this one, my other one. But listen, like, I had no idea what the OMG girl was. Mm. Literally. So the fact that like I got a little mom up here and I really like this was like a part of my childhood. Like it's exciting for me. Wow. Like how you feel? Like what's good? Like what's popping? What I'm you feeling? What's up? I'm good. I'm I mean, I'm I'm good. And 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 thank you. Nah, thank, thank you. Thank you. I love like like for me, I love to connect with people that experience things from the other side of the spectrum. You know what I'm saying? So it's like me creating that sound. I'll be honest, at that time I was so young. I was super young. I think I was like either 17 or 18 when I recorded Lip Gloss. And then I ran with it for like two or three years um, from the success, just like doing shows and stuff. But just like the the foundation of the record, it was like living in Brownsville. I lived in Brownsville. I lived at 77 Legion. Mm-hmm. And I would get up every day, go get on a bus, and I had to take the bus to Murrow. That was my high school. And so I would get off the bus, go to the corner store, and get a lip gloss if I had to, if I didn't ha- already have mines with me. So I feel like it was just something that was like, you know, organic, um, genuine. All every Like everybody in high school wore lip gloss. We wore probably a little bit of mascara, if that. But really it was like lip gloss and have your hair done and you flee. Mm-hmm. So like that's that was our thing. So for me, it's it's just like it helps me to understand like yo, you you connect with people. Like when you were here creating this from a moment that you had, you help other people to create with um to connect with you, and that's that's how it make me feel. Really, yo, can you imagine if that song was popping now, like with TikTok and everything? Yeah, people be saying that about my music. Like they be posting sausage. Like yo, what if little mama drop sausage right now? So like. Yeah, it would probably be even crazier. Yo, I always, because at the end of the day, I know I'm an interviewer and I do my research and I, this is my job. But the one thing I like about this is I'm me and I always will remain me and that's a fan of the music, right? And I always wonder, like, because I've never been a star. And I was just wondering, like, do you feel like you felt at 17, 18? Like, do you feel like your little mama, like, like for me, you come in, I'm like, yo, like, she's a star, bro. Like, that that was a piece of my my childhood. Do you still feel that way, or is it like it kind of came and went? Um, Yes, I definitely still feel like a star. I felt like a star before I became a star. Mm. Like, I had my signature. I, I, I went to dance rehearsals all the time with my group, and we was just a dance group. Like, we competed like that. Like, we never, they never, like, danced behind me or anything like that up until, like, I started gaining success with music. So like, but I always felt like a star. Like I, I just felt like I was destined to do the things that I'm doing. Um, like I studied dance in Harlem Hospital. Mm. There was a um, director there, Ms. Brooks, and she um, basically curated a program. She had ballet, jazz, tap, modern, and even people came in from West Africa to teach us dance, right? And I had to be like seven or eight when I joined that program. And then I, um, I discovered writing, poetry, and music um, in the school that was actually right behind Harlem Hospital, PS 197 in Harlem. And um, I developed 
my skills as a writer. I became a poet. And then I was like, yeah, I want to rap. Because this boy I went to school with, Joseph Hill, he would rap all the time, Joseph. And he was like, yo, your poetry is fire. Why, you you, you like rap? I was like, yeah. My, like, my pops had a rap group, which was more like the company, Familiar Faces, like seven rappers. Everybody um, rapped extremely well. Some people rap fast. This person would have this type of style, that style. That style. And, like, over the time, I had to develop, find my voice, um, develop my shows with my dancing and everything else that I had going on. But I always felt like I was going to be a star. And um, from that moment when Lip Gloss came out and everything like that, it was very bizarre, right? Mm. Because I had my mother battling cancer on one hand. I was dating a boy who wound up getting locked up. Doing jail time for um, a gun charge that I knew nothing about up until like a year and a half into our relationship when he was actually like his do- his court dates was coming up. So I had my mother fighting cancer, this guy going through this, me dating him, going to Sloan Kettering room, my mom hoping that she gets better. All of this stuff happening at once in my world. And that was like in 2000 and I want to say, yeah, it was 2007 because my mom transitioned to 2007. Mm-hmm. I was on tour with Chris Brown. Um... Who else was on there? Soldier Boy, I feel like um, Sean Kingston, Bow Wow. Like, we was deep. Again, just like how my, my normal life is, me and all the boys. Um, we had a great time, a great run. I feel like that success, it brought on so much energy that over time I had to learn how to, like, decipher, like, what's genuine, what's not. Um, and then to also, like, gain my peace, grow as a woman, because my mother passing when I was 19 was like, it was, it was detrimental. I had to deal with that and then also develop my album. So just to give you a little insight in 2007 in the winter when my mother passed and on December 15th, um, the next week we had her funeral. And then the next day I flew to Miami to shoot shorty get loose with Chris Brown. Damn. So it was like all of that. And then all of the attention like, yo, yo, little mama. And it was just like, okay, after that section of my life, it grew into, like, I stepped into television. I became a judge on America's Best Dance Crew. Um, I did that for seven seasons. I gained um, perspective. I gained um, professionalism in that field because of, my like, my times of working, knowing how to run a production schedule from the back end of what we needed to film and stuff like that. And then going into film, like, actual movies, and um, for me, I feel like the attention is so different in music than it is in the other fields. So I kind of did get a chance to kind of like, I don't want to say digress, but like kind of like the attention kind of came off me a little bit. And to be honest, I kind of enjoyed it. Like mm. not being the- The star it, like in your it, face. It, like, yeah. Like, like, I yo, I mean, wait, cause you just said something and I was like, you was 17 when your mom's passed? I was 19. 19 when your mom's passed, and you had to go to Miami like that Monday after her uh, funeral. Yeah, like right after the funeral. Yo, how was you dealing with that at 19 years old? Um, I was numbed. I was very like Brooklyn. Like they took my mother. I'm good though. Like like that that exterior of like toughness. Like I got it figured out. I'm good. And then when I look back, I was like, no, you didn't. You did not. And and it's fine. Um, because I can um, acknowledge it and I was able to like grow and learn myself. Like, although I wanted all of this attention and I wanted to blow up and be big, I never really liked um, unnecessary attention. I'm just not that type of person. I'll put my hoodie on and get low and I like, I'll be somewhere and no, nobody knows I'm there to where it's like, there's that part of my character. And then there's also the other side who's the performer, right? Where you have to get on stage and perform and people know who you are and, or just even hang with my friends. Cause I'm not saying like I'm a shy person off stage and then I'm a performer. Like I have my moments where I wanna be bothered and then I don't. So when it's overbearing, it could be a lot. It's like, I'd rather it be genuine. Like you're speaking to me for a reason, not because you you know who I am from something and now that opens the door for the conversation. You know, I, I was asking that because like, um, and I'm not comparing you to the two, but it just made me think of like some, like what are the telltale signs? Because like you said, during that time, you thought you had to figure it out. Yeah. And we never know what we don't know until we grow and we see that we didn't know it. Right. And like I think of like Megan Thee Stallion, another star who lost yeah. her uh her mother. And like so many people are just been to and, and like they point fingers at 
how somebody is or what they do. But forget all of that. Like when you lose a mother, like what are some of the things that like you are doing or that you're not really thinking about? You know what I'm saying? Like what are what are some of those telltale signs looking back on it? Like that's not really love. Yeah, that's not really what you wanted to be. Like what are, what were those signs if if you could if you remember? Well, I remember. I come from a male dominated family, so there's a lot of men. That's why I love your show. I feel like I just want just a sidebar. I feel like your perspective and like the trage- the, the trajectory of like you and your boys, your friends, you and your wife, mm-hmm. right? And just like the dynamic of the characters in your real world coming into a space to communicate and build. And even if it gets aggressive or even mm-hmm. if it goes and it gets emotional mm. and whatever it might be, it's a real experience, right? Mm. And 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 I appreciate that. You know, I so I wanted to share that with you. And um and just also add that like coming from a male dominant family, like my sister right here, she's 19 right now. Mm. She'll be 19 on March 8th. And then I got another sister that's 21. She'll be 22, right? Um, my sisters were when I when I was 14 and 17, they was born. They was being born. So it's like me and my brothers. It was like a whole different type of vibe. So to lose my mom in the midst of a such a male dominant family, like it was me again feeling like I knew what I was doing. Um, I was a ghetto princess, which means that I had my femininity. I had my soft side and my elements of me that was like innocent and like very like bright eyed, bushy tailed. And just super like um, optimistic about the world in a sense, but then also a tough exterior coming out of Brooklyn, right? So you learn how to protect yourself. Yourself um, in Harlem too. I grew up in both um, boroughs of the city, so it's anything from like people on the corner, like you're like they they hollering at you, whatever. You got to know what to like block out, and then kind of like making time for people too, right? Especially like my brothers, our men, our my friends that I grew up with, like. Um, and balancing out the femininity, mm. balancing out the femininity with the masculinity and understanding that we all need each other. Like, although I felt like I was by myself and I kind of felt like, damn, I, I, it, was a, it was also a part of me that felt like I knew exactly what I was doing. Um, what I actually went through is more so in retrospect. Like now when I look back, I know that I didn't understand what mental health was. Hmm. I didn't know what it meant to need help or cry for help or what it sounds like, what it feels like. Even if I'm like, I'm strong, I got it, I'm good. It could be a part of you that's kind of like, damn, I I really wish somebody would like check up on me right now, you know? And then it's like um, time and growth, I would say for me, gave me the perspective to understand um, what it's like for a young woman to need that um, feminine leadership. So to give an example... When you ask, like, what? Like, what was it? What's some of the things? I would say everything. Everything. You figuring it out. And, like, having my family, having a foundation of people that's kind of like, mm, you bugging right now. Or, yo, you on the right track. I'm feeling you right now. You did that. Like, just the difference in all of those different responses. I know that one is genuine and two that... It was the best that they could give and still is the best that they could give because it's it's coming from a genuine space, whether it's love, frustration, pain, agony, hurt, and it could be me or it could be somebody else dealing with. I had to figure out my position in my family and my tribe. Like on my mother's side, she's one of th- of four sisters. It's, my mother has three sisters. Um, she also has a she has wait, she has my mother has five sisters. And she has a host of brothers, and um, she was the oldest. So now I'm a pillar. When it comes to putting things together, it's like I have to show up. I have to call my grandmother, then I have to call my aunt, say, hey, what are we doing? Yeah, we was thinking this. Okay, and I have to show up. And when I show up, I kind of can feel the energy of my mother, like taking that place of my mother, and not literally, but in a spiritual sense of being there to represent. You know what I'm saying? So... There's so many different dynamics and, and ways that I could go with it as far as like what I've learned, what my growth is like, like having sisters, my younger sisters, I'm here to protect them. So my 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 perspective changes now because mm. now it's a dog. Like 
it, it, it something different turned on when you got to protect somebody else, not just yourself. Like you might be lenient with yourself. Like, nah, that was cool. But when it's somebody else that you love, you're like, nah, fuck that. Mm -hmm. It's not cool. Mm -hmm. You create so. them boundaries. It's crazy because <clears throat> like being millennials, at at one point I will I would say like I'm I'm jealous of the new generation, but I'm not because we get the, we get a chance to experience this generation as well. And what I what I will say is we're blessed and fortunate enough to be able to get a second chance. And what I mean by that is like because you said something about uh not knowing what mental health was at a point right. And mm -hmm. I remember at a time like <clears throat> when I was a kid when we was kids we used to make fun of like people who say you retarded or you, <laughs> you stupid and, like we didn't, I didn't. Me and where I'm from, my homies, we didn't understand what we were doing. We didn't understand that that was bad and that's not nice. And we're not even just not nice, that it's just nothing to play with. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's serious. Or that it could just affect, like, to, all right, when you say that, you're, you retarded, you stupid. Like, there's a, there's a, um, like, for the majority, they understand. Mm. Because we we communicate out of love. We create, we communicate out of spirit. We know when we say that joking. But like you said, sometimes a person might really have been told that in a serious manner. Or they may feel that way about themselves, and you just don't know how you you're affecting somebody with your words. And I was going to say is like just being able to be, being able to experience the world in a different place where those things aren't cool to joke about now, right? Yeah. It's okay. A, it's a blessing. More sensitive. To, yeah. It's, it's a like because because on one part you could be like, man, you know how people like the world is too sensitive nowadays, but like, nah, it's it's a, it's a blessing to be able to like we joke about all these things like narcissistic these words like gaslighting we could joke about it but it's a blessing to be in a world where we experience it and we know how to set our boundaries yeah you know what i'm saying because it was a time where we didn't and we seen how a lot of those situations could end especially for young ladies yeah you know what i'm saying so it's like i think it's fortunate it, it, looking back on it i know some of them things could have hurt because it's like man only if i would have known how to protect myself only if i would have known what was like how to get seek help and get it. You get what yeah. I'm saying? But it's like now we get a second chance at it kind of, right? Like it's yeah. that's dope as hell. Yeah. Like, no, nah, I think it's fire. I um I just wanted to talk to that talk to you about that because again, you never know what be going through somebody's mind. Yeah. Right. And I'm like, man, I wonder if she feels like little mama. Like, cause I look at her like little mama still, right? Yeah, thank you. Um, curious, I did have another question. Um, like you said. He was on uh, uh, a guest uh, judge on America's Next Top. I wasn't the guest. The, the judge. I was there for seven seasons. My From bad. the beginning. My bad, my bad. From the beginning. You was a judge on America's <laughs> Next Top Model, right? America, No, America's Best Dance Crew. Shit, I'm going to be America's, America's, wanna... America's Next Best that Whatever, bro. America's, America's Next. America's. All right. Say it, say it, say it. Say it ABDC. Yeah. America's Best Next. Wait, I'm ABDC. Hey, America's, America's Next Best Dance America's Best, Best Dance Dan Crew. Okay, okay. America's right. Best Dance Crew. Okay, so you said you, 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 you was a judge on America's Best Dance Crew. You was in movies. You you still had other songs. How does it feel that? Cause in a sense, I kind of like I go straight to first prize, first song. It's like bro, I did so much other things after that, bro. Like, how does that does that ever feel like, bro? You have no idea, type shit. Or nah, actually, it don't feel like that because I, I work so that I could leave a legacy behind. I trailblaze. Mm -hmm. I want to keep going. I don't look at my past and be like, yo, I think I did enough where people should acknowledge me. No, hell no. My father mm -hmm. works hard. He gets up every day to where I may have off days. Like I may work six days and then my seventh day I could rest. Or I might work three days and then two days I could rest so I could go to another city and be like, okay, we're off this day. Like when I look at my family, bro, and I look at how we're building generational wealth from the hard work from the ground up, like, and people that don't look at celebrity as an option, but hard work as an option. It makes me feel like, yo, what can I do next? And I really am an artist. I mm. love what I do. So I'll be like, all right, cool. I, I, all right, I played a few roles this way. Now, what's going to be next? Like, what's going to be my defying role? Like, it'll probably be me, like, speaking another language or speaking with a different accent, right? Being from New York, I know my accent is thick. To me, I don't have an accent, of course, right? But I know my accent is thick. I know my energy can be a little aggressive. So maybe just playing like a role where I'm from the South and it's the 1920s or something like that. And then having people take me serious in another You can be like regard. a wife, somebody wife. Like maybe I could be somebody's wife, like two, three cooking kids, and shit. cooking <laughs> and shit. You know, stuff like that. Because I really love what I do. Okay. So I look at it more so from that perspective. Like how can I train more vocally? How can I get in and... 
like really just dissect the script down to a T and really understand like not only where my character is coming from, but where everybody around this character is coming from and understand the dynamics of how she relates to these people and like doing that type of work, it helps me. It helps me grow not only as an artist, but it helps me grow character. Mm. And so I, I feel like I'm I'm just beginning, you know. When I look at Kevin Hart, when I look at other artists that like when I first came out, I think I took a trip to to Chicago or something. And me and Kev had a show together. So we did like this basketball game. And like I think Kev was hosting. And I was just getting started, but I already knew him from like paper soldiers and you know, so plain probably had came out already and stuff like that. And I was like, yo, I really look up to this dude. And then as time went by and I'm like, right now I see him still working. I'm like, Crazy. if I'm 35 and Kev is anywhere between 45 and 50, that's another 10 years, 15 years of work mm. where people are showing up with the same energy, the same hustle, the same grind, the same hunger. And I'm like, that feed that feeds me. Yeah. That make me be like, yeah, I gotta keep going. Right. This is not, this is not. This is far from the ceiling. I know, Cap. Yo, you uh, you relaunching your lip gloss. Okay. Right? So, yeah, it's a pre-launch. This is the beginning. Oh, oh yeah, that's what I get what you're saying, relaunching. Wait. Didn't bro. you do it before? Like, when you had the, the song? You no. Ain't, you ain't do nothing? No, 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 I no, thought no. you had your own lip gloss. No, Shit, no, dang. no, no. Okay, cool. I'm glad you asked that. So, okay. With the lip gloss, when I put out the song, I worked with other companies. Like, in my song, I'm like, Mac, L'Oreal, yep, because I'm worth it. So, of course, I did, like... Um, pop up events with Mac or with L'Oreal and other brands that like I talk about in the song, and that's great that I was able to um, gain that that experience of going out and and seeing what it's like to be the face of a brand, right? To like sign autographs and things like that. I had no idea what was going on from the business aspect. It took Gen Z to come out. Yeah. Like Gen Z is on it. My sisters don't play. They like we're doing this. Um, Maybe about seven or eight years ago, I was like, um, like really crafting the idea of creating my own cosmetic line. I'm like, it has to happen. Like the lip gloss came out. Now it's time for me to do my thing. I've supported other brands, and I mean full throttle. Like once I put my name on it, or whatever. Like people that was going in to buy the watermelon crushes or whatever else I was talking about at the time, it was like my heart was fully in it. So for now to have my own baby, like for us to develop formulas, go through artwork together, um, marketing, PR, how do I speak to my audience, like organically, like get it out there so that they know what I'm coming with now. It's like, it's super refreshing. And then also at the sitting with Queen Afua, she was just like, you know how powerful that is to sit with a vision for 16 years? I was like, I never looked at it like that, like to sit with a vision. And she's like, you gave birth to the music portion of it 16 years ago. Mm. So for you to come back as an entrepreneur and actually see it through, not an idea, not talking about it, not trying to figure it out to produce and 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 have it after 16 years, she was like, nah, that's powerful. Yo, I'm sorry, because that was a powerful moment, but you good. I'm looking at you, right? Don't look at me like that. No, what I did. Uh, I'm looking at you, and because like you had like a couple viral moments, right? Okay. And the one viral moment, like people compare you to uh, Bow Wow. Yeah. So y'all looking like. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm just thinking like. You see it. You know what? I, yeah, yeah. Okay. But you know what? That would been hard. Cause you know how Bow Wow got that like do rag business now, right? Or he on or front of do rags. If you came with like your bonnet, and it was like Daddy. next to next to. <laughs> <laughs> But no, no, fuck it. That was bad. Or whatever. Okay. Terrible. No, okay, I'm just joking. Nah, it's I not terrible. Because I'm, I'm, I'm listening to you, and I'm just looking. And I'm just like, because I just bought a. Uh, That's one of the products that we're developing right now. You on point? A bonnet. Because I just, product, I just bought yeah. a little what's name, and I see like you bought Bow a brush? Wow. Yo, Bow Wow whole face on the eye. And I'm like, imagine if like little mama face was like right next to him and shit. We like actually that. did do that. Um, the 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 um brand that he's working with, Kiss. Um, and, like the cosmetics mm -hmm. company, Kiss. I did a lash a lash brand with them. And I pretty much did like a um, a small collection, like how oh, we did with shit. the lip gloss. Yeah, so I had my own lashes. And literally how you're saying, you bad out over there with all his do-rags when you go in the beauty supply store. And then you go to the lashes and you see me over there like, 
Yo, that's funny. That's Doubling hilarious up. as shit, bro. Yeah, I love Bow. I think that... Um, do you see the resemblance? Of course I do. I was just looking at my baby the other day. She's my niece, but oh, she's still my I was about to say, what? Yeah. Wait, wait. So, like, Rory, we we was somewhere, like, and I was taking... I did her hair. She was like, I look like a grandma. I look like Auntie Mama. I look like... And she's so funny. But I was like, nah, you look like Bow. She, I was about to say, I look like Auntie Mama. I look like Bow She should have said that. I look like Bow Wow. <laughs> now, she would have smoked me if she would have pulled that one. She was already rolling when she was like, she looked like a grandma. And then she said she looked like me because it's like, get it? Like, I look like a grandma. But um, she probably would have smoked me if she would have hit me with that one. But anyway, I'm going to find a picture. I got to find a picture of her too, right? All right. I don't have it ready. It, this wasn't prepared. No, it's all good. So, I'll come back around to it. Anyway. You ready for this like entrepreneurship? Because now you about am. to do it by yourself. Yeah. But I have a team. I have a team. So it's Vanity Set Cosmetics. In the beginning, like seven, eight years ago, I had the dream. I had the idea. I spoke to some of my family members that kind of wanted to do cosmetics, some of my friends from high school and stuff. And it just didn't work out. Everybody had their own dreams, their own visions, their own, like, and, and everybody was like really adamant about their direction. Mm -hmm. And my sister, she was only in junior high school, like elementary school, junior high school at the time, going into high school. And it was given like overhearing the conversations and she became the CEO of the company. Like, oh, that's what's up. like yo, we going to do this for real. Like, let's get in touch with China, Japan, um, with the U.S., whoever, whatever we got to do to develop what we're doing to make it happen. And I have to take my hat off to my sister because she really, she teed up. She teed up. And she's, she's right only up, 18. Yeah, shout out to so, little sis, bro. But yeah, I wanted to touch on the, the topic of like... The Bow Wow shit? Bow Wow. We need to do a movie together. Like, I feel well, you like, was like sister. Yes, it would I feel be like weird if you was at wife first or before Chris Brown put out Freaky Friday, I thought that would have been our best idea. I thought that would have been our gold. But then after Chris did it, I feel like Chris probably kind of got the idea from us because me and Bow came to a <laughs> me and Bow came to a flag football game in L.A. and I was on Chris' ass. I pulled that flag and he was like, "Come on, act!" He started complaining. Wait, hey. I'm sorry because you know Bow Wow is known for like lying. And like, you know. I'm done. So I'm just saying, I just want to make sure it's not a Bow Wow moment. You being serious? You being for real? No, I'm that serious. Because we got my head of fact checking because Bow Wow, he be you playing. know, it's a whole challenge now. Nah, he be playing. But one thing about it, though, that I respect about him on a serious note is that he's legendary. Oh, came in sure. the game. He came in the game at such a very early age. I was watching an interview with him the other day. Um, and he was talking about like how he met Snoop mm -hmm. and how he was so young. Like being four, five, six years, like anywhere in that area between four and seven, you a baby. Period. Like you don't really know too much. Of Even nothing. fifteen. Even fifteen to seventeen. For I'm real. sorry. Like it I still yeah. It is. Like I was young when I came out too, but I feel like Bow Wow was really no. Young. He was crazy. Ain't yeah. talented. But yo, like, ain't that's I feel like for the exception of maybe Chris Brown. Yeah. Anybody know anybody else? That came out like super young like yeah, that? Yeah, that's still like that's going still, crazy. I'm going to be honest with you. I don't really know a lot of people. And, and I was going to get back into like the mental health aspect of it. Like he had to become a man. You know what it's like to become a man. And like we ain't, we wasn't able to watch everything on here yeah. when it come to the stuff that you went through. My brothers got knocked for running through the block. Like the, the, the boys ran in the crib on my brother for a semi-automatic weapon. My neighbor had to run downstairs from the fourth floor to the third floor. Like, no, he is just a kid. To stop them from murdering my brother. Mm. Like, kids make mistakes. Kids do things. Kids are wild. People are all over the place. You got to really have experience to have true perspective. You mm. know what I'm saying? So I look at all of that and I say, like, he's done some things that I was kind of like, don't play with me. Like, we had we had an argument. Not an argument, but we had, like, a back and forth online after um, um growing up hip-hop, being on an episode together. Because I feel like he was being a little inappropriate. He was talking to his homeboy, kind of like in a scene, like, and he was being inappropriate about me. And I'm like, out of everybody to Wait, be- Wait, what happened? What did he say? He was just like, oh, you know, because they set it up to where you go on like a date or whatever. And I was like, yeah, I go on a date with him. I wasn't dating anybody at the time. And I knew I wasn't like truly interested in the person that was on the show, but I'm also a cool girl. Like, I know if we go out and we chill, we eat or whatever we do, we're going to have fun. Yeah. So we went to, um, and we did like a, what's the name of them rooms? Escape? Oh, like escape Did room. escape room had mad fun. You and Bow Wow? No, me and Brent, um, BT, BT, me and BT. So now the him, they're sitting, they're standing together in like a sneaker store. And he like, oh yeah, you, you a little mama, you, you gonna be fucking in a week. And it was like, come on, bro, we've been on tour together. You, Soldier Boy, Chris, none of y'all, never, mm. not even your homeboys, nobody. And it's always been the top, 
level of respect. So we kind of like went back and forth online. But at the end of the day, I made a pack in my heart. At, even after I spoke to him on the phone, like that's my brother. People go through shit. Yeah, he said something that was out of control, but it's still like, yo, you willing to go through life and being like mad at this person and holding a grudge or you rather mend it, figure it out and move forward? I rather men did figure it out, move no, forward 100%. because it wasn't nothing detrimental where we need to like, like just draw a line of separation. Mm. So between that and then just like the comparisons of us already being siblings, I say get the bag, do the movie, do something that's gonna drive people's attention to watching us together at one time. We're both talented. We're both beautiful. When people make comparisons, I look at him, I know that he's good looking. So there's no way that it could be a diss. It just, it is what it is. Mm -hmm. And so I just say like, we should be smart about it and, yeah. and do something that's going to last forever. You think, um, I think that would be dope. Me you, too. You think, when we talk about like the uh, the artists that came up as kids, do you think that's it, it does more damage to get lit as a kid than to get lit as an adult? Absolutely. Absolutely. Imagine if you started your podcast at 13, bro. And like, I and, and no then you went game. viral, like just went wherever you was at at 13 and you could have been just a young, wild nigga. Yeah. Or you probably was chilling. It nah. all depends on wherever you, you was wilding. Nigga. I was wilding. And trying to figure it out. And wilding. And wilding. <laughs> like, Me too. I was young and reckless. It was bad. And now. But you was. That's I'm just I couldn't reckless. I couldn't, <laughs> I, could, I, could, I couldn't imagine being you because like. Your yeah, shit was like All the everybody way, yeah. can see you. Yeah, everybody you know, can see I you. I could make my mistakes. Like, yeah, it might have been embarrassing for a couple hundred people, maybe. Nigga, you made my lip gloss is cool. Hey. My, like niggas, everybody knew you. You yeah. know what I'm saying? But yeah, so I finished. You were saying it's So I was saying, like, I feel like we develop character. And sometimes it is embarrassing. Sometimes it is low points, whether our parents is getting in our ass or somebody from the community, somebody from the school, somebody from the gym, if you play ball or like for me doing music, whether it was my dad or my uncle being like, that ain't it, bro. Like, or my mom's, whoever it was. It's like, I went through things in private that helped me build character. And then I went through things in public that helped me build character. But it's all worth it. Mm. Because who would you be if you didn't build character? For sure. And if it, and if the success is coming so early and everybody's telling you yes, especially as a young man, young women telling you yes when, for whatever you want from attention to sex, like... Who, who do you become if nobody's giving you discipline, if you don't have time to develop? Even if, like, it's things in my life where I look back and be like, I was tripping. But in that moment, I just felt like I, I may I may have felt liberated. Like, this is who I am. This is what I'm doing. And I'm, like, stuck in my way. And then it's like somebody being like, yo, you bugging out. But it takes that time and that growth to answer your question and becoming an adult to say, okay, I'm in a space right now where even if I'm dealing with conflict, I can deal with it in a way where I understand what's in front of me based on my experience and I'm able to deal with it differently as opposed to being a child, like trying to figure everything out and develop mm. and grow. Yo, at 17, how was the, uh, did you have any like mental, how was the industry for you at 17? Like, cause you were, you were, you were a young girl, like was people like accepting of you? Was people trying to throw passes on you? Like how was that time for you being, being 17? When you say passes. Like, don't like trying to holler at you. Oh, okay. Like, throw a pass No, I feel like, like, no, I'll be honest. I really feel like I sabotaged myself at that age. Like, I didn't like nobody. I didn't want to be like none of that. Like, I used to just flare my nose and be extra hard. Like, it, it, it was real? a part, for real. A part of it was because it was such a male, domin male dominant crew. Mm -hmm. My crew is male dominant. Like, I don't Who was in your crew? My dad, okay. my uncle, my three older brothers. But these not industry my people. Two, I'm not talking about industry people. This We are in the industry, but we independent and we come in with our own things. So it's not really giving- So you was independent at that time? I was signed to, I, I had signed to Drive Records and Sony. And so I get what you're saying. Let me answer your question then what, from what, that what, perspective. What, what, what. I was in the male dominated family, like foundation, which goes into what you're asking too, right? Um, Like right now- me and my peers, we have conversations about women. We have um, conversations about women in the industry, promiscuity, right? Mm -hmm. Whether it's um, something that is being like kind of like um, put out there from the person or like how you said, people trying to holler. I was protected in a way that I feel like a lot of women aren't really protected. Mm -hmm. Like I remember somebody asked me to um, a, 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 a party, like a, like a, um, a, like not a gala, but um, it was, Clive Davis's party before the Grammys. 
And so we actually went out. But in preparation to go out, it was like me, the man, my father, my uncles, everybody like at the hotel while I'm getting ready and they kind of sending me off. Now imagine if he asked me to go out and I didn't have that protection. I would have been there at the hotel probably getting my makeup and hair done, going out to this event. And then he probably would have been like, yeah, so um, mm. you know, you never know where the conversation would have yeah. went after. And I'm not saying the person's name because he was nothing but respectful. That's cool. Yeah. And it was never a situation where he tried anything. But I feel like it was no room for that. And I say, I explained that to my father too. I was like, like certain things people wouldn't, they just kind of could read the room. It was a little Wu-Tang Clangish. You know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah. Like seven, eight of my my father, my uncles, everybody always around me constantly. Um, and it kind of played a role on my like my dating scene. Like my dating was very like intimate. It was like somebody from Brooklyn that I knew. I knew their family. They knew my family. Calm. Never a, like another person that's like a celebrity or okay. something like that. And I think that that had a lot to do with my circle. So I'm trying to paint the picture. So what was the what, what would you say? Stepping outside of yourself, right? Because some people say it was never done. But where would you say the downfall was? Was it like that Jay-Z incident? Or what was the downfall for you, do you think? When you mean like a downfall in my like, life? Like the, the career. Like where did, where did it go downhill, do you think? Um, My career went downhill when... Um, okay, so in 2007, when I went to shoot Shorty Get Loose the next day, the next, yeah, the next day after my mother's funeral, I was already tapping out. They was like, you got to finish the album. It's December. My album came out in April, like 429.08. That's the date of my first and only album, mm. 08. So I was like, yeah, nah. I'm I'm not really sharing this with everybody else. But in my mind, I'm like, yeah, I'm done. I don't want to fuck around. I'm good. Damn. I do this for my mother and like it's over. So fuck it. Like, I'm good. I'm on a show still, doing a dance show at the time. Like, I'm active. Like... I don't know. I think I might be wrong. Did I pick it up right there? Oh yeah, I think I was. Once I started, once the album was coming, like I was um, coming to host on the show, making income. Um, and for me, I was just tapping out. You was like, it was a I'm tap good. out. It, it was a tap out, and that's two thousand and eight. So now two thousand and nine rolls around, which you're talking about. That's two thousand and nine September. Between two thousand and eight, the album, all the way up to then, you no single, done. no plans to put out another album, none of it. So it's like I was already in a space where yes, I was I was on a, a television show making anywhere between forty and seventy grand a week, and that's an episode or two. Um. So I was successful in my own right. I just wasn't like on it about being lit on the music scene. I was trying to like fall back again to like gain my um my 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 I wanted to grow organically. I'm a black girl. Like I'm really a project baby. Like I'm from the hood, like where we figure things out together, me and my peers. We listen to our parents, but then we have our little talks. Everybody get together, we vibe out, we figure things out. And I started feeling like I was kind of like disconnecting from who I knew myself to be and who I was becoming. But that's a good thing, though, like that growth. And so by the time 2009 came around with that event, I did feel a difference and a shift in um, my effect on the fans, the industry, whoever. Like I, it, like it just became well, propaganda played a major role because there was immediately after the event, there was... Um, you talking about the war show? Yeah, after okay. the war show. This is the VMAs, 2009. You're talking okay. about, I like to call it 913. Okay. Because that's the day. And that's the day that my grandmother was born. So I was already in good spirits, mm -hmm. sober. The fuck is you talking about? Um, feeling lit. Oh, people were trying to say you was lit? You was... No, no, no. I just think oh. that people just try to figure out what was going on. Like Kanye had his Hennessy on the carpet. Certain things was going down that night. You heard? It was lit. I don't blame it on the Hennessy. Yeah, I don't blame it on the Hennessy. You blame it on the... Right, but you have to take accountability for what is. Oh, we could take accountability, but we still yeah, could talk about the Hennessy it, look. I no, I think like I feel like some people because I'm this way and yeah. I had to learn this. I feel like some people are so passionate and genuine in their heart that they have to express it to everybody. And I feel like that probably Kanye was that probably was something that everybody was saying in the room and felt in their mind. Yeah, felt in their mind, and he was like, "No, nah, I gotta say something about this." Granted. Again, the industry is is, is wicked. Is is I don't want to say it's weird. The world is weird because like 
everybody, it reminds me like you had a job and everybody talking shit about the boss. Yeah. But then you say something and then you get fired, right? Yeah, oh, it, okay. It's like that. So it's like everybody's probably saying something. I'm going to be the one to say it. And then when I say it, I'm that everybody's person. Scrutin- I'm that person. So we had but that was that wasn't your, that wasn't your situation though. That wasn't my situation, but we're very similar in that way, and that's that's all I'm speaking to. Right what now. you mean? No, 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 no! Don't do me like that. I'm not trying to do you like that. No, nah, don't do me like that. Like, I wasn't, tell uh, me, talk like, to me, man. So, all right, so um, I'm very similar in that way to Kanye, where I'm the one that'll be like, "Yo, y'all trying to act like y'all don't see the moon is orange tonight? Mm-hmm. Like it's going down." I'm, I'm I'm getting that off my chest. Right. So I get that. Um, but for me, I just wanted to tap into a little bit. Like me and my sisters, we talk all the time. Like. She's tired of hearing about it. She don't want to hear about oh, it. But for, sure. my, for me, believe. it's more so like different people want to know different things for different reasons. And as long as a person is genuine with me, like if you coming at me like, yo, I never knew this. I never knew that. And I really wanted to know what was going on. I'm going to give it to you. But if you're trying to be funny, then I got to shut you down. I got to protect my energy. 100%. Now, I want to speak to that night a little bit and say that one, yes, I was sober. Um, I was excited. 913 is a special number to me. It's my grandmother's birthday and it's my weight at birth. So... That night was like, it was just a special night. And as as usual, I'm always late. So one of the things that I noticed in just doing my research about the night, like because it's a very popular event, right? I'm like, wow, I really want people to know that I came in the middle of the night. Like I wasn't mm-hmm. there when Kanye went up there. Okay. I wasn't there yet. So um Wait, 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 hold on. I'm sorry, I apologize. I'm gonna let you This wasn't the same um event, was it? Yeah. Same night. No way. Same night. What the? F- That's crazy. Yeah, it's the same night. No way. That was the that was the same. Yeah, no, same it night. wasn't. It's the same night. As Kanye West, that went Taylor Swift. Yeah. I just got. It was a big night. That's crazy. Yeah, it was a big night. Yo, when I got home, I was so mad because I was like, I ain't no. <sighs> Yo, like that's it was cr- mad stuff that had me tight, like Janet Jackson performing honoring Michael Jackson. After I would have saw that, that was the opening. I was late, bro. I was so late. I, I, I miss all of this. So when I got back oh, home and I watched it, I'm like, yo, Janet did a tribute for Mike. Remember, Mike passed in 2009, a little bit before, around the BT Awards, because I remember being in a chair, getting my hair done in LA. I was in a chair, getting my hair done in LA for a pre-BET Award event. And they was like, yo, Michael Jackson just passed away. I was like, what? I made the girl stop doing my hair. I think I just went to the hotel and just, I didn't even go out. But anyway... Fast forward to 2009, September 9-13. Mm-hmm. My bad. My bad. Finish the story. Finish the story. Janet Jackson performed. She did a tribute for Michael Jackson. So I want to took my you ass want, up you there. Want, you want people to... Wait, wait, wait. What? I want to took my ass <laughs> oh, you up there. there. No. I, was say, I thought you said you would have went up there with, with Janet. Janet. <laughs> 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 uh, now no, I know you're that no, crazy. Like, you're no, not crazy. No, no, I'm not oh, that crazy. Okay, so, so... So, yeah. I didn't see Janet. I didn't see Kanye. And then when I got there, I think um, Beyonce was performing Ring on it or something like that. Like, it was a couple of things going on. I remember her performance being very, like, significant. Like, she tore that shit up. And then it was, um, first of all, being on America's Best Dance Crew is like the cameramen were the same men. We were supposed to be recording live and streaming. And then I was supposed to sit in my seat, which was, like, all the way in the back so that, um, like... What did they say? They was like, we're going live with the show and we want everything to feel live from the show to the awards. So please, you know, don't go to, if you're going to go, don't do camera. Like they made an announcement at work. So now I get there and the cameraman like, yo, what up? I'm about to sit you right next to Lady Gaga. I'm like, bro, I was good in my seat. He's like, come with me. So he sits me down in the second row. Mind you, I done miss everything from like all of the controversial stuff that took place that night. Like with Taylor and, you know, Janet and everything. So now I'm sitting there, and you know I'm from New York City. So when the song kicks up, nobody else really thought this song was hot like that, but I did. And so, you know, I got excited, and I got up there, and I feel like um, Jay, like one of the things that my brother brings to my attention, because me and my family, we just do research, and we always grow. Like, we're growing, 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 constantly growing. Nothing is about just shutting down and being like, that's it. Like, no. So he was like um, bringing up that like 50 had went on stage with him before. T-Pain. Like, so he just might have just been super offended and not knowing your angle, like not getting it at all. Like, what is going on? Niggas is disrespecting me. I'm not with nothing. And so it's like, wow, from that perspective, I get it. But from a perspective of like um, Jay-Z and Alicia Keys both being from New York, me being from New York, and them singing about New York... For me, it felt like super propaganda style when everybody's like, we just don't get it. Because like, what you don't get? What you don't get? 
But if, if somebody puts it in your face like, oh my God, this happened and it wasn't supposed to happen, immediately you're going to feel like, damn, some shit went down. Mm. So I feel like from there, I had to deal with um, propaganda, which is basically um, journalists from like the Wendy Williams to the radio stations, the Breakfast Club, or even um, at that time, Ed Lovell was up there. And I feel like he gave a genuine response. But like other people, they were just kind of like chiming in. And it was given, it was given gossip. It wasn't given leadership. It wasn't given fellowship. It wasn't really given like they was taking my hand, like, yo, we gonna figure this shit out. So if you need to sit down and have a conversation, let's do it. It was given like, you know, those are my friends. And it was just so many things that I didn't see. Mm. Like I didn't see that they were using me for clickbait. Like, yo, let's create, let's get her to come up here because this is a hot topic right now. Was their angle to whereas my angle was like, let me go on here and clear this up. Mm. I wanted to ask, wait, because damn, wait, wait, wait. Yeah, that was the same night. First bro. of all, yeah, yeah, I'm, that messed me up, but because I'm really a fan now, but not now, but I get what you're saying though. I'm inquisitive from a fan perspective. Okay. Was Beyonce 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 trying to stop me? That's what they said. Yeah, did, I try to get her to go up. <laughs> did you feel like? Did you feel? Her, like, <laughs> no, 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 you got to, bro. It's too late. We in. I need some popcorn. Like I'm all I'm, right. So when I when I came from all right, so I'm like I'm supposed to be probably in like row fourteen, but the orchestra like the people who are putting the show together, they work with me every week in yeah. LA. Mm -hmm. They flew to New York for that night because it's a special event, but we work together all the time. So they sat me in the second row, I think, or third row, second row. Anyway, I was in the front. Beyonce was in the row right in front of me. When mm -hmm. I told the person next to me, I'm going up there. This is he got up, moved. I went around. I went to B. I was like, you coming? She was like, oh, what? Like, you know. You sound just classic like classic B. B. She gave classic B. She gave classic B. Huh? What? Honey? Can I, be? I was like, you coming up there with me? It's up. She was like, oh, no. Like, she was confused. And then um, I was like, all right. And then I think she probably did, like, try to do that. And I was like. So that's that story. You, you, so it's funny because like you don't try to run away from this moment. Like, cause usually people are like, I don't want to talk about that. But yeah. like, you, like you, don't, you don't try to run away from that moment. I feel like sometimes for me, it has been a trying to run away from the moment type of thing because people put it out there like, that's what you should do. Like, don't talk about that or do this or do that. And it's kind of like, nah, this is life, bro. And in order for somebody else to learn from my situation... Or to learn from a situation that they might be going through that might be similar. They might have stepped on somebody's stage in another way. Mm. You got young people that's into paraphernalia and all type of stuff that's going on in the streets. Now they got somebody's stuff and they did something they wasn't supposed to do and they could be nearly losing their life. Like Evan Ross and ATL. Mm, 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 mm. No, <laughs> and so you... it's like, how do you come, like, how do you bounce back? And for me, I feel like now that I'm 35 and I think that might have been their age at the time and I was 19, 20. It's like, come on, man. Like... For me, it's all about fellowship, like reaching back. And like people if a young, can learn from it. Like, yeah, like yeah. if a young shorty do something that I don't like, instead of me shutting down, like, yo, I don't rock with them at all. It's more so like, I want to see them. Mm. Bring them here or let's meet up and let's figure it out. Whether if it's on a street level or on the industry level, it's going to be some things that's not going to rub me the right way. I'm a human being just like everybody else. So it's like, I, t I, I take on the vow of I'm going to walk in if a young person makes me feel uncomfortable and I know that they don't know better and they still learning and they growing, it may be some things that just turn me off. Don't turn my back. Be there. Say something. Show up. Because it's important. But you know what's funny? Not funny, but it's what's, what's crazy about that is you probably, I mean, you probably learned it, but you probably learned that because of how you felt in that Yeah, moment. in that situation. Like you said, like nobody really grabbed your hand. And no. Like, and now it's, probably, it's almost like an obligation. It's like, man, I know how I felt in that moment. Yeah. And nobody had my back. They did so not have my back. So even if I see somebody that's young making mistakes, that's the last thing I'm going to do because I, I would want somebody that did that to me. Yeah. But we getting serious and jokes, serious and jokes. Yeah, we got You know you're the, the goat for that? Like, nobody could be like, I I'm was not on stage lie. with Jay and, and Alicia Keys. Like, I'm on, not going like, to lie, the upside. Of it in my heart because before going in, I was a fan of both of them. And after going in, nah. But like before going in, I was a fan of both artists. And I know a lot of people from my hood, especially Brooklyn. I know grown people that's like 10, 12, 13 years my senior. That's big fans. And 
if you ask Jay their names, he'd be like, who? But if you ask him mine, yeah. he'll know who. Yeah, like you can't, you can't, you Forever. can't knock that. And I and I'll take that. I take that. Right. That's what I'm saying. You feel me? Yeah, take I'll that. Take, take that. that. <laughs> well, maybe not. Take no, that, take that. But. Yeah, maybe not take that, take that, but we just gonna take, take that. that. <laughs> niggas is crazy. We wait, gotta chill. Yo, niggas is out of control. We gotta chill. We, gotta chill. we have to. All right, all right. Wait, all right. wait, 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 wait. Hold up, bro. Yeah. Hold up. Because I'm learning so much about this. So I did a little research. Okay. And like, you felt at one time like Jay-Z got you canceled or like- I never said that. No? I've never said that. Not canceled, but like- he had something to do with the. You spoke. On I don't the know right. how this might sound, but I just feel like they didn't say anything and they didn't do anything and they saw what was going on. But I also feel that same way about their own career and their own traumas. I feel like before I even became a celebrity, before I even was known nationally, just studying, watching, learning from interviews and things like that, they won't even speak on their own situation. So I can't get mad. Okay. Like it'll be something going on with him, okay, okay. and he will be like quiet. Yeah. So I like a part of me feels away, but then a part of me feel like he not even going. That's because you grow. You grow. You don't really now. be addressing shit. That's because you grow and now. and on top of that, it's because I'm grown now. And on top of that, like I'm like my father's a hustler. Like he's gonna get his bag. Like he's not waiting on nobody. He's not looking to nobody. And I think that him. I think that he's proud of me just. Being focused on getting to my own bag, yeah. being a young entrepreneur, focusing, going in, like, you know, into acting and production and doing what is going to bring me to that. And I kind of feel like Jay would be too, would be proud of that because yeah. he, like, by listening to his music and being a fan of him before that situation and just kind of like following his career, he the type of, he the type of person that'd be like, yo, get your own money. What you worried, what you waiting for somebody else to have your back for? Like, so it's just like, for me, it's like and that's a fact. Yeah. I only ask that because, like, you know, like nowadays, more recently, I feel like this is a new thing. It might not be a new thing, but a lot of people been blaming everything on Rock Nation. Like, Rock Nation got this. Rock Nation got this person canceled. Rock Nation got like uh, this person conspiracy theorists and shit yeah. like that. And I was just wondering, like, I never knew like it was that serious. I'll be honest with you. For me, I give all the power to God. Come on, dog. I give all the power to God. Come like, on, man. Like she I, talking some shit now. I'm gonna be honest with you. Like I give all the power to God. Like my wins, my losses, you know, my celebrations to my mourns. Mm. I go through a lot, no, facts. and it don't, and, and everything don't is not based on a certain uh event, but about around events in my life. And I know that God is working through me, using me. I'm a vessel. Mm. I'm I'm far from perfect, but I have a purpose, mm. and so I can't give them that power. I can't give that power I like to nobody. It. I like, like it. I, I think they don't. I, they can't get that. Nah. I seen Maya. It was a it was a small snippet of Maya talking on Vlad one day, and she was saying that um, I love this when she said it. She was like, "Man, because I, I don't know if they talking about her being blackballed or something." But she was like, "I would never say that. Like, I would never make no excuse and say that." You know what yeah. I'm saying? I just stepped away because there was a lot of things that was going on that I didn't like. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And I wasn't going to give give anybody else the power to have over me. And I that was it. And I thought that was dope because most some people would be like. No, nah, they black bomb me. They did this and yeah. they did that. I mean, I gotta, I gotta agree because, and I have to reclaim my power because I did stop making music when my mother passed. Mm. I wasn't, I didn't put out an album around nine thirteen. I didn't put out an album after nine thirteen. I spoke to a very well established actor who told me that the only thing I did wrong after nine thirteen was not put out an album. You should have put out an album to capitalize off of it. And I was like, that's everything but what I wanted to do because it truly was a genuine stance. Mm. I wasn't trying to be funny or weird. So putting out an album would have made me feel uncomfortable as a person. But I have to reclaim my power and say that I slowed down in work when my mom was passing because it's the truth. Yeah. I was I was like semi-done. Like, what, what are we doing right now? Like, stop yeah. playing with me. No, and it, then, go ahead. No, I was going to say, like, it's crazy that you said that because... Even like us talking about being young and like, how old were you at that time? Not 13. Um, not 13. I had to be like 20, 21, anywhere between so 19 even, and 21. I was still let's young. Say 21. Yeah. Even yeah. at 21. Cause I did, I was hearing like Jay speak on it and he was basically saying, I don't know why she came up there. And I was I was just wondering, like, it ain't hurt that like they didn't reach out to you just to talk. Like, yo, are you okay? Of course that hurt it, bro. That shit hurt it. 
I'm sitting up there looking like Anita Baker, like, I apologize. <laughs> on every damn episode, I'm like, I'm going to Tyra Banks, going to this one, that one. I'm like, nah, bro, I'm I'm done. I'm hanging up, I'm hanging up the Anita right now. Um, not doing that. They no never more. called you to like No, the- never. And that and that's the part where I'm like, you gotta like, if you're a person that ever been through anything that hurt you or like, to be honest with you, Twitter was new. Like, let alone the opinions of people on my block, naysayers, this, that, that, and the third. Twitter was new, and I went viral mm. on Twitter. Like, I was the first person to really get, like, the ridicule to that level and that degree. I had to turn my phone off. I was so embarrassed, hurt. And then, like, Instagram wasn't even out yet, bro. Mm. Then Instagram came on. They kept cutting my ass. And then we just became cool. Like, I feel like being in the shade room and being amongst the people and really hearing what they have to say... And like, um, just like bonding with people, I was able to grow. It's kind of like I was saying earlier. It's like some something going down, and then like it's 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 like like whatever, like an embarrassment, like a bad fight. Let's say mm-hmm. I got beat up in the schoolyard or something. Let's use that as an example. And then I'm just standing in the yard, and everybody like, "Yo, you got your ass whooped!" And uh, after a while, you adapt. After a while, people be like, "Nah, you did, but you at least you hold you held your own." You know what I mean? Like, like that's how it feels. But at the same time, it feel like. Damn, who 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 are these people to me and who do I have to be to myself mm. and who do I have to be to the next generation? Like I'm a solution based person, so I'm always thinking about like what's next? Like what's like what's the next thing? So when you ask me things like about blackballed and all of that, it's like I have to take my own power and and um go back to what I know is factual of what I did with my music. Like as far as if I was still pushing, like if I was still pushing and I would be honest, I would be like, bro, I put out another album. My shit went fucking brick because niggas was blackballing me. But it's not the truth. <laughs> yeah. The truth is that maybe there was some conversations of anger and um, maybe there was some conversations like, nah, I don't fuck with shorty. Or maybe, maybe it existed. I don't know. I wasn't in the room. I can't tell you that. All I can tell you is my part. How did you like, because we could laugh and joke about it, but like, how mm-hmm. did you... Do you remember how you dealt with that? Because I know that had to hurt. Like you said, he was embarrassed. Yeah. In the beginning, I was hurt. Tyrese called my phone as soon as I got home. He was like, yo, playing. And then when that ass was on there going, ah. Nah, let me stop. But no, seriously. Um, Tyrese had hit my phone. He was like, bro, you ain't tell me you was performing. <laughs> First of all, my heart is racing. I'm already mad, embarrassed. I'm like, ah, 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 ah. you crazy, Ty. <laughs> Why would you say something like that? Performing. <laughs> That's crazy. You saw me perform? <laughs> <laughs> Funny as shit. So like I had to deal with him and then I had to deal with like hearing like at Love on the radio in the morning, Wendy Williams, um, eventually uh, uh uh Angie Martinez, who she talked to Jay, mm. and he was just like, Yeah, you know, I didn't like it and everything, and you know, and he was so angry and I was just trying my best to do everything I could. After a while, I was like, forgive yourself, bro. Mm. Forgive yourself. Move forward. That ain't make you like, that ain't make you depressed or nothing? Bro, I was hurt. I was depressed. I was like, yo, what's going on? And then you got everybody telling you like, you're doing bad. People pointing at you like, what did you do? Like, of course you're going to feel like that. And how was you able to get get through that? I'll be honest with you. My faith in God. My mother taught me about the love of God and the direction of God in the spirit when I was a very young girl, probably like three or four. My mother used to be like, you love God? And I was like, yeah, I love God. Why you love God? Because of you. You teach me about God. Da-da. You love God, you love me more. I love you more. Nah, I love God more. Because mm. God is the purpose for all of us. So little things like my foundation in that space and then like my family. Like having a family that's not trying to make me right or wrong is a blessing. Because they find in a balance and truth. Mm. Like where were you right? Where were you wrong? How do you move on? Mm. What are we doing right now? So like... I talked to my father about, and it's mad, like, emotional, because I was like, hey! When I went into audition for Left Eye, when I went into audition for Crazy Sexy Cool, bro, I was like, they don't want to see me. I felt like, I felt um, defeated, right? And then there was a very special song out at the time that helped me get through it, and I kept listening to a repeat. Mary, Mary, go get your blessing. Mm. It's your time. And I really let that sit in, and I was like, And I went in on a, I want to say like, it was a phase. Like I went in to audition for one person and she was like, I wouldn't change a thing. 
Then I went home before my next audition. I had a dream that they was like, that ain't it. I wake up to my alarm. I'm like, what is going on? I get myself ready. I go to the audition. They like, oh my God, she's killing it to themselves. And I'm like, I'm nervous because it's like the director, the producers, and I'm like just hoping that I'm locked in. They loved me. Chili and um, Tion both vouched for me. They was like, she got it. She reminded us of Lisa. And I think that that was the first moment where I was able to say, this is something that I do that's of me, that I'm creating in this moment that can propel me forward in a positive way that doesn't have anything to do with anybody else, no handouts. I work my ass off to get in there. And it was mad connections. Like the writer, Kate Linear, Linear, she's really good friends with my aunt. Like they both did modeling and she was studying for writing and everything. So my aunt and my uncle got wind of the auditions even coming and was like, you need to audition for Left Eye. You need to play Left Eye. And I was like, they're not going to want me. I'm going through so much right now. And it's, we're talking about from 2009 all the way up to like 2013. And I'm like, what am I going to do? And they're like, girl, if you don't fucking wipe them tears and get in there and play Left Eye. So it was like a process. But with the power of God and the power of family, I was able to push through and get back on my feet. Like, okay, this is what I do. This is something that I'm confident in. This is something that's real for me. That's not based on a... Um, a gimmick or anything that somebody could use and say, oh, she's doing that because she's beautiful or she's doing that because she got a nice body or she's doing that because she slept with so-and-so. No, I work hard for everything I've got. Mm. Damn, man. No, There's a lot of history there, bro. Like this, when you never thought about like just- Writing that book? Going, yeah. <laughs> like, I was going to say like mentor young lady because it's people that go through, it might not be to the extreme of getting on a VMA stage, you feel yeah. me? And have, but- People get embarrassed about things every day, and like I'm pretty sure they can learn from you. Know what I'm saying yeah. like how to get through it because when you going through it, I'm sure it seems like forever. I'm sure it seems like a never end. Yeah, like never. Like I don't know if it was Baltimore, Maryland, or not, but it was some girls fighting over a boy in the bathroom, and they killed one of those girls. Mm -hmm. Somebody died in a fight. Like I said, my brother got ran down for a semi-automatic weapon. He 14, 15 at the time. Cops got shotguns in his face. Like, nigga, you better put that fucking... They took my brother out if Miss V didn't run down it. Tissue. Oprah. <laughs> <laughs> Tissue. Somebody get Tissue. Oprah. A piece of a napkin or Please. Something, man. Give me something. Yeah. Um, but nah, I be I be thinking about like real life stuff that people go through, bro. And I be like, so blessed. Mm -hmm. There's people in jail, bro. I met a girl. I met a girl. She had a fight in Brooklyn. A train station. So on camera and everything, it made the news. She was trying to get Shorty off her. She's trying to get Shorty off her. This girl coming up to her, she leaving the train station now. She going through the turnstile. Shorty coming up to her being an aggressor. I don't know where she got what from, a knife or something. And she pushed Shorty or whatever she did to protect herself, poked her out, killed the girl. When I went to go visit Rikers Island, she was holding my hand like, get me out of here. Mm -hmm. I don't belong here. I was protecting myself. Mm. And I couldn't even take her out of there. But I saw her story and I knew who she was. And I was just like, it's people going through worse shit than me, bro. Mm. And that's what helped me be like, yo, I'm good. That's why I smile. That's why I be happy. That's why I laugh a lot. That's why I be like chilling. Because it's like, damn. It could be so much worse. That shit is crazy. Like. When we saw that story on the news, like, I didn't know that I would see her. I think her name is Maya, something like that. Maya. She held my hand in that jail. She wanted to go home. That girl wanted to go home. And I was just there on a visit to speak to them, get an insight on some of the women's stories and what brought them to that place, what they was going through. But her specifically... Help me, like, and I mean, like this, and I, I like to be transparent, especially with people like you, because I, I, I watch your interviews and I see how you process information, and it's like actual events, like me going to Rikers Island to visit, and that girl holding me, like, yo, get me out of here, help me 
to understand my strengths mm. and and help me to forgive myself. Like, yo, bro, it's not that bad. This shit could be way worse. You could have did some off the wall, wicked, wicked stuff that could have had you messed up forever. So my bounce back came from me, you know, one, reclaiming my power and really coming to do what I came to do. God got a purpose for me. Um, and my talent is just a part of it. Mm. I love that. I think that that's really like the best part of this for me, to be honest. Just hearing people have their stories, going through it, learning from it, and being able to tell it. You know what I'm saying? A lot of people nowadays are scared to have to to talk about their story because again, they don't want to be the laughing stock again. Right. And I understand that. They don't want to to relive that. And I understand that, but I feel like your your story is a superpower. Yeah. Because so many people can learn from that. You yeah. know what I'm saying? And I, I I appreciate you sharing that because I, it, it takes a lot to do that. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And um I just can't wait to the, the day the world understands the purpose and how I do my interviews. You know what I'm saying? Because yeah. sometimes people just they don't want to have that conversation. And I understand. You know what I'm saying? I understand. But um I, I truly appreciate it, man. And, and Bro, it's this 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 makes me and I like my like we friends in here, you know what I'm saying? They'll tell you like this makes me happy. Cause it'd be times mm. where I'd be over these fucking interviews. Yeah. I swear. But the fact that you learn from it, you can speak to it and and the most important thing is you got up and you was able to fight see another day. Yeah. Cause there's so many people who can. Like you said, the girl was in jail, like and just by protecting herself. Could have been so much worse, but we talking about something we can we can we can actually sit back and laugh at this. Yeah. This yeah. ain't shit compared yeah. to what the fuck some of the stuff that life. people really go through and what we go through right Come in our on, personal man. lives Facts. that people don't see you know this shit ain't got like it. I mourned I'm, I, I had to have mourned for like two to three years straight from different people in my family just going boom 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 beating me up and I'm like damn I gotta stay I gotta stay strong for my uncle's daughter my uncle passed from cancer I gotta stay strong for my little cousin cause my niece got I mean I had to stay strong for my little cousin cause my Aunt got stabbed to death in Brownsville. Nigga, your sister's because like, your mom's passed. Because like, my sister's and my brother's because my mom passed. Like, it's like so many different layers. But to be honest with you, when I see you have transparent conversations and I see you can speak to your wife and have a hard conversation or speak to your homeboys and have a hard conversation, even if it doesn't put you in the best light, that makes me feel comfortable mm. with speaking to you because I know that you genuinely want to know and you genuinely want to connect with somebody, just have a conversation, bro. Like, we human. Like, everything is not going to sound and look so perfect. It's just, it's okay. Relax. Mm. Yo, I, I'm i blown away, man. Um, how, how did, did the Cosmet line come out already? Well, all right. So this is the come pre-launch. On, let, me, let me put you on, because I know you're a little lost. It's your second time trying to wing it, too. I feel you. I respect you. You was like, oh, so the relaunch. Like, no, I'm saying like- No, so, you Gucci. I, I'm trying to get you some money now. Yeah, now you Gucci. We've been through this shit. I ain't mad. I ain't mad. So the, all right. So basically, the lip gloss line yes. is going to officially launch in June, right? In you June. don't even know. You talking about me. <laughs> June. All right. You talking about me, nigga. I like to confirm. <laughs> June, right? Cute. All right. So- our official launch is in June. Okay. Right now is our pre-launch. Our first lip gloss, Truly in Love. All right. So our you got first, it with you? Yeah, she got it. You were supposed to have it on the table. Yeah, man. Come yeah. on, man. Toss it, man. Come on. Put, no, no. Come over here. Come sit over it. here. Yeah, yeah, sit, sit them down. down right? CEO. I was thinking about it, too. You feel me? Come on, CEO. Sit right here. Put that shit. No, so they can see it. No, so they can see it. Right there. She got it. So they can see it. Come on, CEO. Right. Turn them to the It's Poppin' side. Yeah. What the fuck are they talking about? Yeah, man. Hold on. I hold it. Fuck it. I no, hold you it. Good. Up. Just lean it up against the liquor. That's how I was doing it at a Queen of Fool House, too. That should be good. Yeah. That shit is popping. All right. So the first one is. Hold up. They might can't. Hold up. There you go. Hold up. Hold up. Okay. So the first one launched on Valentine's Day is called Truly in Love. Okay. Now the next one in March. Um, Independence Women's Month. Now when you start dragging like women's now. Nah. So um it's strike a pose. And then next is The Voice in April, which I told you my okay. first album came out 42908. So this is the Sweet 16. We putting out, you know, I got to drag it with my little promo, my ads. Yeah. Relax. Shit, so man. April is The Voice because that was the, the month that the, the album dropped in 08. Mm -hmm. So and now we got the lip gloss. So April. 
And then May, college girl. My my other sister, she's a senior at Spelman. So it just all added up. So our pre-launch series is about us highlighting each of the four lip glosses first. And then um, we're going to probably drop it with the bonnets. Huh? In June. Facts. Next Maybe. Bow Wow. Yeah, with Bow Wow. <laughs> <laughs> Me Wait, and so Bow Wow. Can I, can I have these? We're going to send. Can I have we, one? We're going to send. A daughter. No, no, no. We, we know you have a daughter, 14 years old. Bro, what the fuck type time y'all be on, man? <laughs> Yeah, 14, job, man. yeah, fourteen year old daughter. She's beautiful. Thank you. Your wife is beautiful. Thank you. And y'all have a new daughter too. Bro, I know you got a new daughter. What's going on with y'all? Got a new daughter. And your, do- your your new daughter. Your baby. Oh my you god. You the fed? She is adorable. I do my research. I got to do my homework like you do your homework. Your daughter's adorable. Thank you. I, and so we're gonna to send two packages. Okay, we're gonna yeah. send one for your wife and one for your daughter. Okay. They, okay. The baby. Cool. She ain't gonna. She probably nah, nah, throw it across nah, nah. the room. So so grown ups what? That might it's lip crazy. gloss. I'm grown, 35, bro. Yep. Yeah, I so know. I wear it. My bad. I'm surprised I, I ain't got nothing on right now. I thought like grown ups wear lipstick and shit. Yeah, I wear lipstick. I wear lip liners. I wear lip gloss. So the gloss give you like the glare. The you know what I'm saying. So like, you can wear gloss over lipstick. Yes. Oh shit. That's fine. I'm glad you didn't know that. That was mad cute for you to ask that because it's like no, nah, for real. I had a moment where I'm like, oh, he didn't know that. Yeah. Wait. Like, what's the point of doing that? So you enhance it. So all right, let me show you. Um, pass me the. I'll take a truly. All right, so I'm wearing a, a lip liner right now with a little bit of fake lipstick because it's kind of like crayon and lips. I don't know how my lips is looking, but I hope they look cute because I kind of did make sure they was cute. Where was I need that? lip liner. I just need lip gloss. I'm showing oh. him. All right, so now I'm going to put the lip gloss on top of the lipstick. Hope it ain't too much. Do we give it like a little sheen? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Hold on, wait. <laughs> Wipe the corners of my mouth so I work it. Hold on. You need a mirror? No, I'm good. Oh, you good? Are you a professional at this? So, thing? yeah, that's what I do. That's why, that's why I was teaching people what to do. So, this is the Truly in Love. Okay. From the It's Popping collection. Let me show y'all the It's Popping. It's Popping. We did everything ourselves. Okay. I like that. From packaging to formula, everything. So, I'm very excited about it. it so, the one that came out Valentine's Day. This is Truly in Love. Can they get it? They can get it. How? Um, all right. So on our site, VanitySetCosmetics.com. Slow down. You know, okay. you're from New York. Okay. The link is in my bio on Instagram. If you follow me, then you can follow us. All right. So the store was open from Valentine's Day up until what day it closed? February 28th. So we want to do our launches, our launches in a way where it's like fun, interactive, and not not normal where you could just get everything at once. So that's why we're releasing one at a time because mm-hmm. we kind of want the fans to um, tap in to um, the storyline of each one. What it, what's the purpose? Why? Okay, that's hard. Because like my okay. first album, Voice of the Young People, yeah. that's the album all together. Yeah. But Lip Gloss is the hit single. Yeah. And then that and Shorty Get Loose. Both of those was top 10 Billboard. And then... Um, oh, my... Finish the promo. I got And then, okay. Just want to make sure. <laughs> so, and then, um, so I named them after songs. Like, Truly in Love is a song on the album. Mm-hmm. Strike a Pose, that's a song on the album. Um, what's my other ones? College Girl. I named it College Girl because my sisters sister. is in college yeah. now. But the song is called College on the album. And the song is actually about my trip to um, a faculty. Is that that's how you say it? No, it's not fact. Facility, yeah. To see my dad. Okay. So it was jail when they was telling me he's in school, but I didn't understand. So I wrote about it. Okay. So that's called college. But the lip gloss is called College Girl because now we're in a new space. The girls are actually in college and we wanted to enhance that. And then the final one is The Voice. So that's playing off of the album itself, mm-hmm. Voice of the Young People. So it's The Voice. And all of them are just like encouraging glosses. Um they come with a, a like a powerful quote and message behind them to encourage women as you're using cosmetics, which enhances your beauty, right? To know like we beautiful already. We just do this stuff to spice it up, but we are who we are. So Yeah, I wanted you to get your promo in. Yo, so okay. this dance show, how long you was on there? For seven years? Seven seasons. Seven seasons? So I probably did like four years on it. So year. how many episodes was it in four uh, seasons? Four seasons. Four seasons? Seven seasons? Seven seasons. Episodes each season? Mm, probably went ten and up. So like seventy episodes. Probably like seventy. My God, how long? 
You say you was getting paid what? I was getting paid. Don't do the math. I was getting money. Wait, That's feel, what I'm saying. I'm, I'm, like, when you say when you say successful, I mean like, yes, I might have stepped away from the music, but I still was. But getting, did you save some bread? Yes, I saved some bread. And my father don't play. He's a hustler. He gets his own money, and he encourages us to get bread. Like. Y'all could cry over whatever, but if it's spilt milk, nigga, you better mop it up and keep moving. We not doing that. Oh, so you still kicking up for real? We gotta get, we gotta get money. If we don't do nothing else, we gotta get money. We niggas, get money. Just, niggas say play with it if you want to. Yeah, nah, we, nah, don't play with it. Don't play with yeah, it. Yeah, nah, we don't do nothing in this family. We gonna be successful. Yeah, we gonna get money. Yeah. Nah, this is good, bro. I like this, man. Make yeah. sure you send me the lip gloss so I can give it to my daughter. No, we're sending you a package for your wife and your daughter. All right, bet. It is a mature line and it's also a young line. You got to remember, I was 19 when I put it out and I'm 35 now. So it's designed It's designed for you to enjoy the experience from with, with, like whether you was with me then or you was with me now. It's not like a kitty gimmicky thing. And I never want to take that approach when I'm pushing anything because I have to live with it. Even my music. Like my music kind of like grew into a space where I'm like, yeah, if I go on stage right now and do this, I'm gonna kill him. I'm with it. I'm with everything. It gotta be right there in that pocket, or else I'm gonna feel like, what am I doing, bro? It's not even me. Well, no, nah, I said it for real. I'm gonna send it to my wife and my my daughter for real. I want because I'm curious to see what they think about it because I don't know about like. I'm curious to see what they think about it too. I'm gonna uh, get them. I'm gonna record them just like I told you with the the liquor. Like, give me your real opinion. Nah, it was nice. It was nice. And I already had a shot of something else. Y'all trying to get me teed up on here, but hold on. Put some more lip gloss on. Nah, that's good, man. I think, I mean, I think that was good, right? That was, that was, that was, that was really good, man. I appreciate y'all, man. Uh, I feel like people know how to follow you at already. Like, you, okay. you, you a superstar. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Jay. Uh, uh, you funny as hell. Uh, Little mama, everybody. Mr. J Hill, J Hill Podcast is a wrap. We out. That was good. <laughs>